And I'm not wearing one because I'm fairly distant from you all. That's why I'm not, and so you could hear me. So we want to remember that Steve Ellis had a successful surgery and also is doing well and may come home this week. So very thankful for that. And also to remember Allison Ritchie. She's had some complications with her operation and uh, she had some antibiotics and things going on. So Allison Ritchie and Steve Ellis. We also uh, got word this week that Fred Ray's brother, Ed, died this past week. So we offer resurrection hope and ask that you may receive our Lord's peace in these days. Some of you know, because you signed up for it, some of you know that there's a Zoom Bible study. It begins tonight, 6.30 p.m. Dave Lutz, who is here, is leading it. It's a 12-week study of Daniel, a perfect book to be studied prophet Daniel. So thank you. Thank you so very much. Also, next Sunday, we're going to be moving into singing our liturgy, and so we'll be wearing our masks, of course, we'll have them up and snug, but uh, we'll be singing hymns and responses, and those who do not want to sit in an area where they're singing, sit over here. If you want to be okay with singing? Sit over here. Pretty simple. And I'll announce that next week too if you might forget. But we'd like to have a worship time that seems more normal for us in these very abnormal days. Also, I want to tell you, thank you for all the gifts that you're giving of money. We appreciate it very much. And usually, as we move into this time of the year, we see an uptick in amounts of money given. So those of you who might be listening, oh, please send in your money, please. Uh, we need those contributions very much. And the gifts are appreciated. And I do believe we have PayPal set up for our gifts, PayPal on our website. So please do not forget your church. I am Pastor Fulmer at First Lutheran Church here in Altoona. And for those watching and worshiping, please turn your volume up because we have our volume raised as much as we possibly can. Our musicians, we appreciate them. So much goodness that comes out of our worship time because of those who faithfully uh, serve us as musicians. Again, thank you for choosing to worship here at First Lutheran. And let us turn to our order for confession of our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, imploring Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, forgives you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. May he strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. And we stand.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, in you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love. And for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way.
Please stand with me for the Gospel acclamation on page 6. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say, from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So Jesus answered, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, Go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. He answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So good to see you once again. I'm happy to be with you. It is always a pleasure to be here at First Lutheran Church and to see your faces and to imagine the faces that I do not see and welcome you as well. Did it ever happen to you like it has happened to me? I have said yes to something that I was asked to do. And only later on to think, oh my goodness, what a mess I got myself into by saying yes. And there have been other times in my lives whenever I have said, no, I don't want to do that. But really, inside of me, I was willing. That's what's happening in our gospel today with these two sons. They don't really know their minds and hearts very well. I remember one time in my life whenever I was encouraged to do something that I didn't know very much about. I was in college, second year, Lock Haven University, and I was going to be the organist at that church because someone was taking a sabbatical. And of course, in those days, I could do what you do. Well, not that well, but I could do it. And I was an organist. And so the pastor said to me, okay, you're gonna be our organist, and I want you to take over the junior choir. I said to myself, I said to myself, I think about it, I said to him, I've never done that. He said, well, you can learn how to do it. I really very much would like you to take care of our choir. And I really had a no inside of me, but I said, sure, Pastor, I'll do that. So I did learn some things about myself. I learned some things about music and choirs. But most especially, I learned then 
that I need to be true to myself because if I say no, that should be a true no. And if I say yes, that should be a true yes. Sometimes when we say yes to things, there's a no hidden under that yes. It's happened to you. And likewise, when we've said no, maybe there is a yes there, but we've, for one reason or another, said no. So there is a saying in uh, St. Matthew's Gospel that says, let your no be no, and your yes be yes, because anything else comes from the devil. Interesting. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. And so we have that happening in our lesson today with these two young men. And there's also somewhat of a confusion going on with the uh, people uh, at the temple with Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. They had divided minds. They didn't want to say the truth, although they knew the truth. They didn't want to say the truth because they were fearful of the people who really thought John was a great prophet, which he was. And so if he was a great prophet, he was doing the work of God. But Jesus asked the question, what do you say to this, from God or from man? And so they were not willing to say a yes or a no. And instead they said, oh, we don't know. And so Jesus kind of says, well, I'm not going to tell you either. And then there's the parable. Someone said, if you're going to say, I will do this, make sure you do it. Let your word be real and authentic. If you're going to say no to something, make sure your word is clear there. So that your yes should be yes, and your no, no. And a part of that knowing is in our hearts, in our minds, where Jesus truly resides with his love and his spirit and wants very much to help us clear things up so that we can have authentic answers as Christian brothers and sisters. Authentic answers to those things that plague us in our life where we need to know the truth so the truth will set each one of us free. I've wondered many times in my life as a pastor, have I said yes, really meaning yes? Sometimes not. Even recently, here in the life of this congregation, I remember saying no to something that I had said yes to, but I really had a no. And that is, do you think that causes conflict? Cause conflict? Yes, yes, yes. And so it's far better for me to know what's true for me rather than saying yes and then later saying, oh, I've been thinking about this. That's not really true. You've been in that situation. I get into that situation. So we ask God to help and guide us so that we know the truth that will set us free. Jesus is calling each one of us to be his disciples. He's calling us in this time where there is so much of a problem with people and what they say and what they don't mean when they say something. It happens all the time in politics. We know that. And also in our day right now, in our country, have we reached that large number of people who have died from COVID-19? 200,000. In the world, the number is greater, greater. But we have a pandemic. And so I thank you for being true to yourself and saying, I can come to worship because I'm doing all the protective things. And we are doing all of the protective protocol that we possibly can do here. And so we believe and think and know through science, this is a safe place to be. I want you to know that, because as we come here, you might have in your mind, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if I want to come to worship, and yet this is a safe place, truly a safe place. And so I offer you a safe place to worship. 
a safe place to be united with your brothers and sisters. We need those connections with another, with one another so very much. And so here we are, the Christian community, far and wide right now. But I want to ask you, those of you who are not worshiping with us right now, consider coming to worship because it is safe and it is good to sing and praise the Lord together. So let your yes be a true yes, and if you must say no, let it be a true no. And the Lord Jesus Christ, that bless you with clarity of thought and mind. Amen. Please, please stand and return to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Brothers and sisters, we are drawn together by the compassion of God, who is our Father, who cares for us. And we pray for the Church of Jesus Christ and all the world and all those who are in need. In all the world, give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ where the church is powerful and where it struggles, shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Lord, in your mercy, your son, Jesus Christ, took on all of bodily life in our world, even to death. Preserve and keep your creation. O God, mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged so that all of creation Confess, you are the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, turn the nations toward life. We especially ask in these United States of America, where our ways are unfair, give us new hearts and new minds and new spirits. Where sin permeates, we ask you for your life, your new life, to change our minds and teach us your authority. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, our lives are yours, O God. Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. We especially pause to remember all of those who have died with COVID-19 virus. And remember all the families and the friends who suffer. And for all who are fearful about COVID-19 virus, we do thank you for Steve's healing and we remember Allison. We ask for peace for Red, Fred Ray and his family with his brother's dead, death and We have so many situations in our nation that are desperate. Reach out to the people of this nation and leaders so that there is mercy and justice for all. And so help all of community leaders and legislators, everyone in the work of government of our nation, to make signs of mercy possible and of justice to flow in our midst. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord, for all those who have gone into the kingdom of heaven of us. Remember the people who are dear to us. We want to remember everyone who is suffering through this COVID-19 crisis. We ask you to help us to be obedient and to learn. And by the witness of those who trust in you, teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in the midst of life and death. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, hear us for these things that we ask and whatever else that you see that we need. We entrust you to mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us have a small sign of peace with one another. resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life and so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world. You gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks for our salvation, not as we ought, but as we are able. And send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, so that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, our Lord Jesus Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory.
glory are yours, Almighty Father, and your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. We pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, So indeed, this is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. to possess it completely in the kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. 